All right, so I just want to um, review some exponent rules with you because the next part of the chapter, chapter five, um, is going to deal heavily with knowing these things. And you pretty much, you know, some of them already, but um, a couple of them you might have forgotten. So, you know, when you multiply exponents, like let's say you have x to the third times x to the fifth, you know that you add your exponents, right? So you can just, um, if you want to write these down, um, you know, you have your paper, uh, you could probably kind of write these rules like at the bottom of your paper here or something or over to the side. But anyway, um, so, you know, when you multiply, you add exponents. So multiplication means you add your exponents. That's rule number one. Now, if you have a number in front of these things, like let's say you have like a 3 and a 6, you, know, you still multiply numbers, so that would be 18, right? So that doesn't change that fact. All right, then the next one, um, let's say you had um, 12x to the third over um, x to the tenth, let's say, and there was like a 4 in front of there. Okay, so um, when you divide, you subtract exponents. Well, 3 minus 10 is negative 7. Also, you can see there's more down here. So that means if it gets you negative 7, that means there's going to be 7 x's left on the bottom, x to the seventh. 12 divided by 4, this cancels out to a 3. So there you go. So basically, all these get canceled with 3 of those, leaving you 7. So the general rule here is division means to subtract exponents. Okay, right. um, third rule is kind of dealt with up here, but when you have a negative exponent, when you have like x to the negative 2, what that means is 1 over x squared. It means that it's um, going to move to the denominator, okay? If something's already on the denominator, like let's say you had like 5 over x to the negative 3, that means it needs to move up. So basically, wherever it is, it's not happy there, so like this would move up and become 5x to the third. Okay, so some negative on the bottom, it moves up, negative on the top, it moves down. Um, let's see, uh, next one, anything to the zero power is, um, actually I kind of skipped one up here, I should have done, but let's do that one. Let's do like, let's say you have x to the third and this is to the fourth. Alright, so when you have a power of a power, you're going to multiply exponents. This is saying x to the third four times. So 3 four times is 12. But remember that anytime you have a number in front, like let's say you had a 2 right here, you do not do 2 times 4. It's 2 to the fourth power. So 2 to the fourth power means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. So that's the hardest one for people. And the last one I want to go over is um, to the zero power. So anything to the zero power makes one. Even if it's like um, like a huge thing, like negative 100, x to the third, y to the third, all to the zero, it all turns into a one. Now if only part of it has a zero, like let's say you have 12, x um, to the second, y to the zero, z to the third. Well, this part becomes 1, but the rest of it just stays there. So 12x squared z to the third. Okay. All right, so we just have a few problems to go over with you just to use these. And um, then you have those other problems to do. All right, so let's go ahead and start up here with this basics. Um, we're multiplying, so we add the exponents. So the 10 that does not change, but 4 plus 3 is 7. Okay, and it's a big number, so you can just leave it like that. So here, multiplying. So 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. x4 and x to the third, so these two right here add together to 7. And y2, and this would be a y1, 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay, so down here, same rule. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. So here, I have a negative 5 with a 5. So I'm going to add those. They add up to 0. And 1 plus 4 is 5. So when I'm rewriting this, this could go away because it's just equal to 1. Okay. Over here, uh, 5 and 7. I'm dividing, so I subtract. So if I actually follow the rules, this would be 4. 5 minus 7 is negative 2. Well, I shouldn't leave a negative exponent, so I should rewrite this as 1 over 4 squared. Well, 4 squared is 16, so 1 over 16. Okay. All right. When we have a power on something, we do it on everything. So this means 3 to the third and also 4 to the third. So work that out. 3 to the third is 3 times 3 times 3, so 27. And 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. All right, so division. So I'm going to subtract my exponents. 
Actually, I'm going to write it down here. 24 and 6, these divide to 4, and I'm putting negative. Y2 and a Y6. So 2 minus 6 is negative 4. So that means there's going to be Y to the 4th in the denominator. The negative tells me where to put it, but I don't put the negative when I'm there. And X to the 4th has no partner, so he's just going to stay down here in front or back. All right, so same idea for number for this problem. 12 and 18 both divide by 6. They make a 2 and a 3. So my answer is going to be 2 with a 3 there. 7 minus 1 is 6, positive 6. And the y's just totally cancel. So done. These next two have parentheses with the power. So that means I'm going to be multiplying my exponents. But I'm not going to multiply 5 and 2. I take negative 5 to the second power. So that means negative 5 times negative 5. So 25 x to the eighth. All right, negative 4 to the third. So that means negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. That would be a negative 64. And then x has a 1, so 1 times 3 is 3. Okay. All right. So same idea down here. Negative 2 to the fourth. So notice a negative 4 times would come up to a positive. 2 to the fourth is 16. 1 times 4 is 4. 5 times 4 is 20. So really, it just deals with, like, mostly three basic rules. Either you multiply and then you add your exponents. When you divide, you subtract your exponents. And then the third most important rule is this guy down here. When you have powers, you multiply your exponents. So powers, you multiply exponents. So those three things right there are, like, the main things that you're going to run into a lot. All right. So here, I can think of it as two ways. I am multiplying, so I could add my exponents. Well, what's negative 5 plus 5? It's 0. And then b to the 0 is equal to 1. x to the negative 4, I can write that as 1 over x to the 4th. And that's it. Here, this whole thing has a negative exponent. So the whole thing goes to the bottom with a positive 4 underneath the 1 when there's nothing else there, because there's nothing else in front. So, let's see, um, negative 3 to the 4th, so negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. This makes 9 times 9, so 81. And then x to the 4th. All right, this guy here, so 2x to the 4th is going to stay. All of this is going to go to the bottom. Sorry, I just... Is it your corrections? Okay, cool, I'll put them in. I just had this last problem to finish. <laughs> Have a good weekend. All right, so all of this goes down here, 4x squared y. Let's see, sorry about that. So all of it goes to the bottom with the third power. So let's work it out. We have a couple steps. I can't do anything yet because I work out my third power. So 2x to the fourth. 4 to the third is 64, we saw earlier. 2 times 3 is x to the sixth, and y to the third. So now when I look at this problem, 2 and 64 reduce to 1 and 32. They both divide by 2. 4 and 6, so there's going to be 2 left down here. 4 minus 6 is negative 2, so x squared on the bottom, and y to the third has nothing to do. So I end up with my final answer. Okay, so hopefully you remember all those exponent rules, or they're at least familiar to you, and your job is to uh, complete these problems here. Okay, all right, see you later. Bye-bye.